Well, that's the sound that tells you it's time to take a look at what's happening in the world of business. And today we are from the Nairobi Securities Exchange, where we are glad to be hosting the Chief Executive Officer for MTN Uganda, Vin Van Halapute, who is going to be talking to us about some interesting developments in their business and why they are setting their sights on the Kenyan market. Welcome to Nairobi, Karibu Sana, and uh, pleasure to have you on the program. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for hosting us this morning. It's a pleasure to be here in Nairobi and at the Securities Exchange. Uh, looking forward you know, to some exciting day ahead of us. We were already here yesterday uh -huh. because uh, <coughs> CMA Kenya has approved uh, the advertising campaign for our IPO. Yeah. So that's why we decided uh, to come, come here and tell uh, Kenya about what's happening on the other side of the border with, right. our, with our IPO. All <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, just to, you've, you've let the cat out of the bag. Let me get some more insights into mm. this. Uh, of course, uh, MTN is big in uh, Uganda. You also have a presence in South Sudan as well as um, Rwanda. And yeah. uh, Kenya is a fairly uh, advanced market when you look at the telco business. Mm. And uh, perhaps let's just begin from there. Why Kenya? Well, you know, we, we are listing on the USC, the Uganda Securities Ex Exchange. Uh, we're doing our IPO as part of our license renewal obligation. And we have requested for uh, authorization from the CMA in Kenya to be able to advertise and promote the IPO also within Kenya, which means that now I'm allowed to sit here and talk to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> we're also allowed to run advertising in the newspapers. We're allowed to go on radio, have a press conference. Because, of course, Kenyans or anybody else in the world, uh, you can always participate uh, in, in, in the IPO. But uh, the difference is that the CMA gave us approval to actively advertise and do the marketing of the IPO within you know, this, this, uh, this jurisdiction. All right. So it's exciting moments because, because you know, the, the, the Kenyan capital markets are, are more advanced, I would mm -hmm. say, more developed. Sure. Um, so there's a long, longer history in Kenya, Nairobi, of course, on, on the stock exchange here. Um, so we believe, you know, that uh, by promoting and, and actively advertising the IPO, um, we're going to have some very good uh, interest from the market here. Um, there is a big giant... Uh, Working here eh? <laughs> on the half of the of the stock exchange, yeah, Safaricom. So sure. the Kenya market, of course, is very familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, not say that we are in the same league. Mm -hmm. I think we are a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the Kenyan investor in general, I think they're very familiar uh, with telco, with mobile money. Uh, so this is a good opportunity for us to to actively, you know, tell the Kenyan market about this uh, investment opportunity. Fantastic, <coughs> and uh, we. Just talk, talk to us about the size of the business mm. uh, to get a better appreciation and, of course, uh, some history behind this. And sure. So MTN Uganda today has uh, 15 and a half million customers. Uh, we started in 1998, so that's 23 years. We're now in Uganda, 23. Uh, we've been growing consistently. Um, we're the biggest taxpayer or tax contributor because we collect a lot of tax <laughs> on behalf and we're passing it on. Sure. So biggest uh, employer. And when you add all the mobile money agents, like 150, 200,000. Um, so yeah, we, 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 are, we are big in Uganda. Okay? Uh, the company, the company uh, is valued now at about 1.2 billion. So that 20% IPO is a ticket of $250 million, which I think is uh, one of the biggest IPOs in East Africa for the last 10 years or more. Uh, so it is significant for Uganda, of course, because we we are basically going to double the the size of the USC by just uh, the one listing, but then even on an East African scale, um, 250 million is quite significant. Uh, so yeah, it's very exciting, and that's why you know we, we, we can't we cannot do this without coming here and tell uh, sure. the Kenya market about this. All right, <coughs> and uh, Kenyan investors are quite uh, very peculiar in terms of uh, just understanding. Uh, their risk appetite mm. and uh, 
coming to a market that uh, <coughs> is, uh, is fairly developed, uh, as like you said it, mm. and uh, looking at the number of listings we have, we are north of the region of over 50 companies being listed yeah. in our market. Uh, just talk to us about what steps are you going to see in the next coming uh, weeks and months, especially are we going to see roadshows by MTN? just trying to uh, ramp up investor sure. sentiment uh, across the market? So the, the offer period opened on 11th of October. Okay, so we're already four weeks in the period. Uh, we're actually closing in two weeks' time, 22nd November. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a short uh, period of time remaining in, uh, in the market. Uh, we have done already quite extensive roadshows, uh, a lot of international, now it's the webinars and mm -hmm. the teams and the oh zoom yeah. you don't have to travel sure. the whole world anymore huh? yeah. so that's easy uh, we've also been uh, on, a, on an upcountry road show in, in, in Uganda upcountry uh, my whole executive committee uh, we went for 10 days traveling the entire country talking you know to the general public to our customers mm -hmm. about the, the offer a lot of work in terms yeah. of financial inclusion explanation education about stock markets and how it works um, but there's been a very exciting journey because uh, there is definitely a lot of interest and the idea of the of the of the the listing is really a localization okay so the, the obligation is list but it's really about localization so when we negotiated our license renewal, uh, we looked at this and said, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. Today, we only have two shareholders, okay? Big company like ourselves, two shareholders is not, it's not enough. It's mm -hmm. not good. Mm -hmm. So we looked at this and said, why can't we turn this into an opportunity? As it's an obligation, but let's turn it into an, op an opportunity to onboard thousands and thousands of Ugandan and East African retail investors. So we have made it very easy for our customers in particular to participate. You can use, use your phone, you open up an SCD account with a USE using your phone, no paperwork, no signature, because we are using the KYC from our SIM registration yeah. as KYC for opening up the SCD account on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. So you open up your account using your phone, you apply and pay for your shares using MTN mobile money, so you can do the entire thing in five minutes from wherever you are using your phone. And then to really make it attractive, we decided to give 5% bonus shares to all East Africans, not just Ugandans, yeah. all East Africans benefit from 5% bonus shares. And then if you use the MTN mobile money phone and the way you onboard, just as I've described, you're getting an additional 5%. So that also shows, you know, our commitment to make this a success for the Ugandan and also the East African retail. Mm -hmm. And uh, this brings me to my next question. Of course, um, in any business, you have to anticipate whether there'll be an oversubscription or an undersubscription. And I just want to hear from you. How do you intend to tackle this uh, in the event that it goes either way? Well, first of all, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. We're still uh, two weeks in the, in the period. So it's, it's you know, they, they call it the hockey stick. Mm -hmm. yeah? So there's some kind of a curve. Yeah. And towards the end, it starts accelerating. So you don't know uh the acceleration should be starting should be starting now mm -hmm. but the early days uh, at least so far uh, we have more than doubled the number of scd accounts the whole of the usc in uganda is about thirty thousand yeah. scd accounts mm -hmm. we have now more than doubled we have added already more than fifty thousand additional new scd accounts so it gives you an idea about the appetite for Ugandan retail to participate. And we will see, you know, how it evolves over the next 10 days. We will know okay. uh, under subscription, over subscription, you know, we're giving it our best shot. Let's see where we land. Uh, right. They're telling me, you know, the last week, everything can change. Either it's a great dis disappointment or a great success. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> uh, but the early signs, at least so far, mm -hmm. uh, the feedback has been very positive. Um, and yeah, we, we're very excited about this, uh, especially about, you know, the, the retail onboarding, okay. uh, because that's the 
uh, as I said, the, the spirit of the license obligation was to get retail investment investors coming on board, uh, not just 10 or 20 big institutional investors taking up the ticket and, you know, you tick the box and you say it's done. No, the real objective is or was to get thousands of retail investors. So this is like democratizing access to the capital markets. It should be, and, it, and we strongly believe it will be, a game changer for the USE, just like the Safaricom listing, I think, uh, 12 or 13 years ago was yeah. a massive game changer for this mm -hmm. exchange, we do believe that the MTN and Uganda IPO is going to be a similar kind of game changer. There will be a before and an after the MTN IPO, uh, the listing uh, in Uganda, we believe. And uh, let me fast forward a bit. Uh, looking at the place and time we are in right now, uh, of course, uh, the East African economies are still coming out of Recovery. the ravages mm. of the COVID pandemic. Mm. And uh, what is in it for the investor, especially now that many of the uh, savvy investors within the region are really keen on hearing what will the company be doing in the yeah. coming months, in the coming year? What's your strategic overview? So you're very right, 2020 and 2021, 2021 weren't great years okay everybody says telcos made a lot of money in the pandemic and work from home yeah yeah we're not here to complain okay, okay. our business definitely performed much better than some other businesses sure. okay uh, we still managed to get like a 10 percent growth year on year for the last few years but on top, you know, the elections, there was some shutdown, uh, even the lockdown was very severe in Uganda. We're still having a curfew, 7 p.m. curfew. Uh, so we haven't fully recovered. We are anticipating Q1, I hope really Q2 at the very latest, with the vaccination, the opening up of the schools, hopefully the lifting of the curfew that, you know, within the next, let's say, three to six months, mm -hmm. we should be back to normal. Yeah. So despite having these challenges uh, over the last two years, uh, we're still having a very solid 10% growth year after year on the top line. Mm -hmm. and, and the bottom line has been growing 20% year after year. Okay, so now that's the past. Yeah. Uh, investor wants to know the future. They're buying today. The whatever current, dividends yeah. were paid, whatever profit was made exactly. in the past is gone. Yeah. Uh, so the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, Uganda as, a, as an investment destination is an exciting place. Mm -hmm. two, two main reasons for fast moving consumer goods in particular. You have exciting demographics, very young population, yeah. growing every day. Uh, so we are onboarding more than a million new customers every year. And that trend is not going to change at all in the next five, ten years. The, the children who are 15 today, they will be 20 in five years from now. Correct. Their needs in terms of connectivity, being part, you know, connect with each other, connect with the world, mm -hmm. financial inclusion, those children will grow up and they will become, you know, addressable market, our customers. So the demographics are very much in favor of yeah. growth. On top of that, the economy. Uh, we're not even counting the oil yet, but we're already expecting five, six percent historical trend of the, of the growth. Of course, with the dip of 2020, 21, yeah. but it will normalize and you'll jump up again. So the economic indicators are also very much in favor to invest in Uganda. And then particularly about MTN, uh, we have three major drivers of growth ahead of us. Mobile internet. Yeah. Okay. Smartphone penetration in Uganda is only 30%. Here we are already at 50 or more. Yeah. So we are at only at the beginning of mobile internet uptake. Okay. We're promoting a lot on device financing, uh, putting our own phones to get that percentage up. If you have no smartphone, you can generate mobile internet data revenues. Okay? Yeah. So smartphone penetration is key to drive that growth. Of course, it requires investment. Uh, the building a data network, giving the 4G mm -hmm. you know, experience with the right speeds everywhere requires CAPEX, so we still have to invest a lot. But by doing that investment, we'll definitely be able to tap into that growth opportunity of mobile internet. On top of that, with the pandemic, people have understood that there are certain needs in terms of data consumption that require fixed internet. You're five at home, two kids watching the Netflix, you are doing a Zoom, sure. Madame is doing a, a Teams call. Yeah. You can't do that anymore on mm -hmm. a 4G router. Yeah. You need fiber. 
Sure. So there is a massive opportunity now, and we are best placed because we have a very solid fiber footprint already in Kampala and uh, the other cities across the country, where you can easily, at a very low additional cost, start connecting thousands and thousands of homes, residentials, to tap into the opportunity of, of fixed internet. And then thirdly, last but not least, mobile money. Okay. Mobile money, we, we, we're here at the, the cradle, the source <laughs> of mobile money. The Silicon Valley. Where it Savannah. all started. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the Silicon Valley of the mobile money uh, yeah. exciting journey for the last 10, 12 years. Sure. We are just across the border. Mm -hmm. okay? We don't have to reinvent how mobile money is going to look like in the future. The future is already here. Lipana and Pesa. Lipana and Pesa is everywhere. Mm -hmm. We in Uganda, we just started about two years ago with a similar product, uh, MomoPay, we call it, but it's all about mobile payments, mobile payments, mobile payments. The whole ecosystem here, you move around, you look left, right, center, you see the sign everywhere. There's no reason why in Uganda we would be able to develop a similar ecosystem. It's just neighboring countries. People yeah. cross the border all the time. People are trading. They know what you know, mobile money can look like because yeah. they're already experiencing it and seeing it here. And then on top of developing you know, that mobile money ecosystem that really would drive the payments, 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 uh, is you know, venture into banking services. We don't have to shy away from this. Uh, we have almost 10 million customers now on mobile money. Yeah, we are bigger than all the banks together when it comes to number of customers. Yeah. Why wouldn't we also be able to offer more and more banking products and services? Uh, saving products, lending products, overdraft projects. I mean, there are so many opportunities now that we believe new customers who join us on mobile money, they will never need a bank account anymore. The basic banking services will be and should be available through mobile money. So again, we already see a lot of things happening uh, here. And there is no reason why in Uganda we will not be able to you know, catch up. We are probably like two years behind of what's happening here. Yeah. So we pretty much know how the future will look like because the future is already just across the border. We okay. just have to catch up. And, and, and copy with pride and, and maybe even make it better. <laughs> Why not? Well, at least try, you know, to, to further develop and, and, and innovate uh, a lot of new products and services. Mobile money is a great opportunity. I, I mean, I don't come, need to come and explain uh, mm -hmm. to Kenyans how, what mobile money opportunity we have in Uganda. It's, uh, it's just, uh, you know, implementing uh, what, what already exists here. All right. And uh, I'd like to put you on the spot a bit. Uh, let's talk about the numbers. Uh, you've touched on a very important aspect in terms of investments in very uh, key areas for the business. Um, just walk us through what does your capital outlay look like mm -hmm. and uh, how is it structured, say, for the next five years? Historically, uh, we have always been spending at least 15% of our revenue back into network because the majority, the large majority of our investment is network. Yeah. Okay? Uh, the guidance is that we will definitely continue with you know, 13, 14, 15 around that area, uh, uh, the range in terms of CapEx investment. Um, we need to build more data network. Okay. Uh, we can't tap into, you know, uh, telling you the great opportunity about mobile internet and the revenues are going to double, triple if we don't build a network. We further expand the network. So there's a lot of investment in, in, in building the mobile data network, 4G everywhere. There's a lot of investment also that will go into the fiber, okay, putting fiber in the ground. And then we also have another license obligation that requires us to cover the entire Uganda, 90% land mass coverage, not just population coverage, land mass coverage. Yeah. We are today at about 70%, so we still have a gap to close. So that's, that alone, you know, we, we're looking at a trillion Uganda shilling of investment over the next three years. Okay, That's about, uh, to put it in dollars, that's about uh, yeah, $280 million, something like that, mm -hmm. uh, of investment in the network in the, in the next three years. Uh, so that, you know, you can tap into the revenue growth. The investment of today is the revenue growth of tomorrow. The day a telco stops investing, 
is the day it stops growing. Yeah. You, it takes money to make money. In our industry, when it comes to building network, that is your foundation and your guarantee almost as an investor that there's going to be growth because you're investing for growth constantly. Mm -hmm. The day you stop is the day you'll start you know, stagnating and you will no longer see growth. So we are embarked on a very ambitious investment plan. Uh, basically, we are accelerating because what we originally were planning to do was a four-year plan. That $280 million was for a four-year plan. Yeah. We are now compressing it into a three-year plan because we want to you know, accelerate the revenue growth, so we have to accelerate the investment plan. Sure. And then we will be able to del deliver on that uh, ambitious revenue, top line and bottom line growth. All right. And as we wrap it up, uh, of course, as the IPO, there's a lot of expectations around it. And uh, one of the major concerns has also been on refunds. We've seen a uh, case in point, Kenya, 13 years ago, mm. uh, the IPO floated by Safaricom. Uh, many years down the line, they're still handling issues to do with refunds. Mm. And uh, perhaps what do you see in your crystal ball as you look at this? <laughs> um, you know, the, 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 the res I, I think the industry also evolved. You're talking about 12 or 13 years ago. Yeah. Uh, there's no pen and paper, what we're doing. Everything is digital, everything is electronic. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't there 13 years ago, so I can't really compare. But when I hear the receiving banks and our brokers talk, uh, we were still very much in pen and paper. Um, and there was yeah massive over oversubscription. I think it was like four or five times oversubscribed. Um, so they had a big challenge at hand. Um, being digital and, and, and like the whole onboarding process from your phone, any refunds, for example, that we will have to do, people buying the shares using their phone, we will also refund them on their phone, free of charge, yeah. okay? So I'm not worried about handling the volumes mm -hmm. that we are looking at and we're hoping for uh, because of going digital. Yeah. Going digital, you know, so, so many problems that probably in the older days, uh, pen and paper were a real challenge. Um, I don't see it as a, as, as, as a challenge at all. Okay. Um, the way we have digitized everything, I think it should be very easy, including the, re the possible refunds. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, having a strong footprint in Uganda as, as you finish off, it would be interesting to hear from you. Are you also eyeing a few companies in Kenya? I know <laughs> back in time when I was starting off my business journalism career, mm. MTN was keenly looking to work very closely with Airtel. And mm. uh, there was, of course, conversations around that. Okay. And uh, any, any, any indications of uh, a well, potential <laughs> suitor <laughs> you're, you're looking the to, MTN, to tap into? The MTN group has a presence in Uganda, uh, in Kenya, sorry, of course, in Uganda, yeah. but also in Kenya. We have a presence here. Yeah. Uh, it's an ISP. Uh, so we have an MTN business unit. It's sure. an ISP um, offering some fiber services uh, to corporates and, and some transit. Um, but uh, MTN Uganda is is in Uganda, and it's our country we're working in. As MTN Uganda, we are not venturing you know, in other countries. Yeah. That is the MTN group. Yeah. Uh, if they want to enter Kenya, it will be you know, from out, out of South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, we are in Uganda. We will stay in Uganda. We'll de develop Uganda. Uh, the, the focus for us is the, is the Uganda jurisdiction, the Uganda market. Um, any other plans, you have to ask my boss in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much much for joining us on the Trading Bell Show. And uh, I'd like you to just close off with a parting shot to investors. Uh, what, what do you say to them? <coughs> well, first of all, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. And I would really want to say that Uganda is a great destination for investment. Uh, MTN Uganda in particular is going to get continuous growth uh, mobile data, fixed data, mobile money. Yeah. And if I can maybe, you know, just make a, a small comparison. We're, we're not the size of Safaricom, but we are a very similar business. At a smaller size, for sure, and we're probably two, three years behind in terms of the growth opportunity. So it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's a no-brainer to see how our company is going to evolve, knowing, you know, what the, the big brother on the other side 
uh, have evolved into over the last few years. We are on similar kind of markets with similar kind of industry, so the growth paths should also be very similar. All right. I know back in Uganda they say Kale Sebo. We were in your Sebo. All right. Thank you for having <laughs> Well, we've been speaking there to Vin uh, Van Halapute, the Chief Executive Officer for MTN Uganda. He's quite bullish that the IPO will perform well in this market. And he's quite uh, optimistic as well that the future is going to be great, especially for mobile money within the region. Well, that's all the time we had for you here on the Trading Bell Show. Remember to engage with us on our so social media handles appearing at the bottom end of the screen. And until next time, keep safe. And see you later. My name is Abhi Gina. Until next time.